Yeah. You know, when I was growing up um, in restaurants and franchising, I worked for some incredible people. And so I had a lot of internal leaders who are a huge part of the reason I've been able to do what I've been able to do as a leader. But I didn't have a lot of external mentors. Um, and I had to figure out a, a way to challenge myself. And I remember I was working as a waitress in a restaurant and the corporate office came in and celebrated that general manager. And the reality was that general manager was a horrible leader, but sales were up, the restaurant was booming, but what they didn't take into account is that there were construction, there was construction activity all around the restaurant. That restaurant would have been busy with the worst manager in the world because there was so much demand. And as an employee, I saw the wrong thing celebrated. I saw the wrong thing used as a marker for success. And, and that is one tiny story, but there have been many after that I have learned to question success much more than failure. Failure, usually it's obvious, right? Everyone goes after and tries to explain it, but understanding success and, and doubting your own rationale for it and, and convincing yourself there's something I'm not seeing. There is something I don't know. I don't know the true truth is a very healthy way that can be used in an unhealthy way, but using it in a healthy way is a, is such a powerful filter to have as a self coach on your own performance and on your business. And so that was one of the drivers of coming up with the hotshot rule, which is essentially the willingness to look at your circumstances as a different person with fresh eyes and then to challenge yourself to take action in the way you would if it were day one. And to your point, culture is built by successes and we are all blinded by our own progress. And um, the longer I've been somewhere, the more likely I am blind to the greatest needs of the moment because whatever worked previously is likely not the solution for tomorrow. And that is increasingly true as the world moves faster. And so those dynamics led me to just I, I became afraid. I was afraid of sitting still. I was afraid of getting stale. I was afraid if I didn't have a lot of coaches and people to tell me from the outside that I wouldn't know what other people knew and that I could be easily upgraded and replaced. And so I thought, well, who is an awesome person that could do a better job than me? I envision um, a person. Sometimes I think of a genetically modified version of my favorite leaders, or I think of just one person I admire and in a healthy way, not a fearful, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be out of a job way. I envision them in my role tomorrow as if, you know, no notice, I'm just gone. They're in my seat, my actual seat. And I ask myself, what is one thing that they would do immediately? The first thing they would do differently and better because all of us have been that incumbent. All of us have come behind some other consultant, some other leader, and it's day one for us. And for what's so funny is the person we're replacing left thinking, this is the best it's ever been because they did make it better. And we join day one and think this is the worst it will ever be. How <laughs> can 24 hours separate the perspective of it's the best it's ever been and this is the worst it will ever be? And the reality is both can be true. It can be the best it's ever been. And if you are a really good self-coach, it is, it is simultaneously the worst it will ever be. And so I asked myself, what would that person do? That objective thinking helps me come up with the answer if I allow myself to really do the exercise. And then I asked myself the question, why can't that be me? And the reason it, it isn't me is I am blinded by my own progress or I feel confined by the way I'm perceived. Maybe the thing I need to do differently is a pretty big departure from recent decisions I've made and how will people view me if I change my mind? Or... Um, what will they say if it's what they've been asking for anyway? And so those fears of being judged keep leaders from changing, progressing, and evolving because they feel bound by their own reputations. And the hotshot rule just allows me to keep breaking out of that. I used to do it quarterly, and then it was so effective monthly. And now I do a version of it almost weekly. Uh, my husband and I have a version of this check-in where we ask each other questions to reflect on objectively so we can improve but the power of the hotshot rule isn't just asking the question and answering it it's acting on it 